Hey guys, I just want to start off by saying welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm super thrilled. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can follow along with us on our homesteading journey. second year of our homesteading journey well actually two and a half years now that's really flown by um, and there's been a lot of changes in the past couple of months and I'm really excited to share those with you but this video is going to focus in on what we did with our new calf mocha when she got nutritional scours now this video is not to act as like a diagnosis video, um, veterinary advice, anything like that. I highly suggest that you have a large animal vet that can help you when it comes to your animal's health. But I wanted to share with you what we experienced and how we helped our two week old calf, Mocha, when she developed scours. So Mocha is a two week old Jersey Holstein cross that hopefully will be an A2A2 milker in the future. She does come from a herd that is probably 75% or more A2A2 mothers and the bulls um, that would have serviced the mothers are A2A2. They come from New Zealand genetics, so we don't expect her to be an overly large cow topping out at about a thousand pounds, which I mean, is a big animal, but definitely um, could be larger uh, depending on the breeds. Now. When we got her from the dairy, she was receiving uh, cow's milk. Um, it wasn't directly from the mom. They were getting milked and the milk was being brought to them. So she was accustomed to drinking out of a, a nipple uh, or a bottle rather. So that transition was a little easy, but the transition going from the milk over to the milk replacer is what we were concerned about. We were concerned about possibly having some nutritional scours, which if you don't know what scours are, that simply put is diarrhea. Now this is the leading cause of death in calves, so it's really important that we take care of this um, and get ahead of it so we don't have um, a lost calf on our hands. So it's the next day after we brought Boca home and something happened that I figured would happen, but I was hoping wouldn't happen. And she has scours, which is just simply put diarrhea. Um, it's super liquidy, it's white, which I'm assuming is from the uh, basically cow formula. She's getting the milk replacer, but she, I mean, she gets up, she walks around, she took a bottle earlier. So right now I'm not on red alert in the sense that like it, she looks bad now. Mocha here did receive some milk replacer this morning. And she also got a bottle of bounce back electrolytes to try and help replenish all of the stuff that's coming out in these scours that she's got. Um, but I'm gonna check to see what her eyes look like because if these are sunken in, then then we have some major issues with dehydration, but like, Pulling back her eye lid. I mean, that's still super tight to the eye. There's no like sinking in or divoting in. You can tell that she's still got some spunk to her. So we're gonna keep giving her her milk replacer and the electrolytes um, maybe once or twice a day just to make sure that we get ahead of this thing and it doesn't get too bad. I'm really thrilled because we are on day two of using the SpectoGuard, um, the anti-scour medication on our calf mocha. This is a pig scour medication, so it is an off-label use, but we did get the okay from our large animal vet. I highly, highly recommend having a large animal vet so that you can call and get some quick advice or you have someone that can come out to your farm and um, take care of your animals. Um, if there is an emergency that you just can't take care of yourself because you can't solve everything through a YouTube video. But Mocha is doing so good with her bottles now. She is definitely got this puppy dog mentality. But what I am so thrilled about, and it's kind of weird to be thrilled about it, is um, her stool. Her stool before was this like just water that was white. Um, and now we're getting it a little bit thicker. I mean, I, I think that it should be maybe a little thicker. I don't know. Either way, this is definitely an improvement from what it was before. So we did not follow the instructions to a T. We, instead of giving her 
three scoops of the milk replacer. We only gave her one scoop of the milk replacer for a couple of feedings, and then we upped it to one and a half, and then we're gonna up it up to two scoops, and then eventually three scoops of the milk replacer in the full volume of the body temperature water. Um, we're doing that twice a day, so she's getting four pints twice a day of that milk replacer. Um, you wanna go based off of your animal's needs and size, different breeds are gonna need more or less depending on it. So do make sure that you are following those instructions. But we brought her home, we were slowly transitioning her over to it and I expected there to be some scours because we're kind of disrupting that natural um, digestive process that's already going on in her body. And so she did, she, she ended up with scours. And so this is what we've been doing. We are giving her her bottle at 6 a.m. of the milk replacer. We are not on a full three scoops like the instructions say yet. And then halfway through the day at about 11 to noon, we are giving her a four pint bottle of water and a packet of bounce back, which is an electrolyte packet that you can get from your local tractor supply company. Um, I've seen lots of videos of people using just regular Gatorade, Pepto-Bismol, all these crazy different things that you can do. Um, but this, that's what we've done. We just stuck with what we were comfortable with and that was the pre-form or pre-mixed packet. So put that in the bottle, gave it to her. Um, and, and then again at six o'clock in the evening, gave her her milk replacer. So she got three bottles, two of them were her milk replacer, one was her electrolyte, and in between the feeding, so between the 6 a.m. and the 12 noon bottles, I'm giving her five milliliters of the SpectoGuard uh, anti-scour medication. Now this was told by us, by our large animal veterinarian, that it was okay to use. Make sure that you get any kind of advice from your veterinarian. Again, I am not a vet. I'm just giving you what we were given information on and what has worked for us. Um, so I'm giving her five milliliters twice a day between those those feedings. And so far her, her manure consistency is just so much better than it was. And it's so silly to be excited <laughs> over manure consistency, but um, I, I, I'm going to say that things are gonna be looking good as far as her manure goes. Um, she is a somewhat smaller animal, so she's about 75 to 100 pounds. So you might have to up or lessen the amount of these things depending on the size of your calf. Well guys, I hope that that helped with your calf scours. Leave a comment below and join the discussion on whether or not this worked for you or if you have other suggestions on if a new calf has nutritional scours. This, we ruled out the possibility of it being a pathogenic issue because where she came from was super hygienic and clean. She was in great health when we brought her home and it was just right after we switched her to the milk replacer. So I'm pretty confident that it was nutritional scours. If it's pathogenic, then you may have to consider taking in your manure to your large animal vet office and having them test to see what kind of medications your animal might need.